your statutes, acts, rules, regulations, bylaws, and any and other branch of enforcement of your government have any effect and any force on a private individual. You know what they responded to? In one sentence they said, no, we lack the proper jurisdiction to enforce against me. One line. I got that. Got that three days ago. They actually replied From to the that? the Canadian government. Uh, Derek, I need you to send me a copy of that. Yeah, sure. Because they've never replied to me ever, so I always hold them in default, but I've never actually seen them admit to that yet. Yes. The, I, I'll scan it a little bit later. There, and I, that is just proof right there that they have no jurisdiction over the private man. They have to yank you into their public statutes by getting your public servant ID and claiming that you are uh, operating in a, in a public capacity of some kind that's obligated to obey their statutes, which you never are. Exactly. Because they can't prove they ever paid you. And if they didn't pay you, you're either they're either guilty of involuntary servitude for enslaving you and forcing you to work for free, or you voluntarily just donated your time. And I don't think either are the case. Yeah. And you know what? The best part is I can now use that letter and file it in any court. Any so court charge. if I have a problem in the future from any court that's operating in, within Canada, I say, oh, here it is. I'll file that right in there with a motion to strike and see how they fucking react and fiddle. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, there's a fee schedule in place for you people charging me with this nonsense, so you owe me 50000 bucks. See you in civil court. Yeah. Okay, I'd just like to uh, take this brief pause, because there won't be many, to let you all know that you're listening to freethinkradio.com. This is Lifting the Veil. I'm Carrie Lee, and I'm here with Dean Clifford and Derek Hill. Two sovereigns talking everything sovereign. That's what we're here for today. <laughs> <laughs> just having sovereign talks, yeah. It's yeah, sovereign talk, like coffee talk, but it's not coffee talk. It's sovereign talk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, another thing that you can actually use that notice, uh, which I'll send to you guys whenever I have the damn time, is uh, every time, or you want it, you can also attach it because there's more than one way to approach the driving bullshit, right? You attach it on your back window. If someone, if the police officer comes up to you and say, "There's a," you know. They're being charged, blah, blah, blah. And I say, you know what? Here, look at this notice. Here, it came straight from the Canadian government. You got fucking beef or issues, you talk to the Canadian government. But from here, it states that I'm not applicable, and I'm acting privately. Yep. See how fast... And, and, you, and you, don't have to, you don't have to prove that. The burden of proof is on the accuser. If they're saying, no, you're not, you're, you're, you're performing some public function, great, prove it. What's your evidence? What are you claiming? Yeah, where's your evidence? You know, and the best part is what I like. Well, like what I like about uh, your approach, Dean, is uh, how simple you make shit. You know, it's like okay, fine. You know what? So what? I got my fucking ID on me. Prove I'm getting paid right now. Prove I'm on duty. There you go. It's you like asking. It, it's like asking a. It's like asking a cop at a, at a at a cocktail party to see his to see his badge. He pulls out his badge. He shows you his badge. Oh, okay, cool. Well, is he on duty? No. Can he arrest somebody? No. Why? He's not on duty. He's not being paid to be a cop at that moment. Yes. And if you, if you, um, if you were like quote unquote working and you do, you know, trespass or breach in one of the statutes, then another charge of which you can do is breach of uh, breach of the trust. Of course. Or breach of duty. Breach of duty is an automatic resignation for any position. So if you can you can ding that with the prime minister, and the prime minister will have to resign forcibly. Yep. Or the military will come in and say, "Get the fuck out." Well, see, that's the power of the military. That's where your complaint eventually goes when you've been ignored by every other branch of supposed law in Canada that is there to protect your human rights. Because people don't understand that the the, the military uh, has the authority basically to have uh, MPs walk into legislative assembly or, the, the, or the, the, the parliament and arrest the prime minister while, while parliament's in session if they really want to. That's the authority the military has over the government. More like the provost marshal. Provost marshal directs the military. Because they direct. Yeah, they direct. So they would direct the MPs to go and arrest somebody. That's yep. the power the military has here. The, mili the military, it's not 
it's not ours to control, but um, it's uh, under the direction of the queen, and queen has established certain rules and guidelines that we can go to help manipulate, quote unquote, or whatever you want to call it, um, the uh, army to actually do what it's intended to do, which is to uphold and protect our sovereignty. And exactly, it's and to preserve the peace, because now, now that's a biggie, preserving the peace, because now if nobody in the government is doing their job, they've violated your human rights, they're refusing to give you remedy, and they've left no other option but, but violence, that's a breach of peace. That's when you contact the military if there's going to be a breach of peace, because no avenue has been left to you but, but basically armed insurrection, or fine, I'm just going to get a gun and I'm going to go take my own property back. Right. Exactly. The military is charged with preserving the peace, so now they have to get involved. Yes, people need people need to look into the uh, uh, the Treaty of Exodus. The Treaty of Exodus is actually where the or uh, the original duties of the Provost Marshal came from. When you read the Treaty of Exodus, you understand how a Provost Marshal became to be, and what duties was prescribed, and what it was intended for. But you're gonna have to go to like a law library because that shit's fucking old. That, it, <laughs> it was actually, you know what? It was actually made in 1776. U.S. Uh, coined that term, and the British Empire, uh, uh, British, the uh, British monarchy actually adopted it. Well, that's Sorry, interesting. The Empire, I to yeah, I, I don't even know. I, I sure haven't read that one yet. But it's uh, it's hard to find. You have to go to an old uh, law library. The one that I saw was like the, sh the book was fucking falling apart. Like it's like it's like a, a 32 page document, and it's like in fucking shambles. Like you have to actually be very careful when you try to scan it. I didn't scan it. Well, I did a long time ago, but I lost it because I had to go through a format. And I forgot to back it up. But if you can find that again and you scan it, shit, that's some fucking yeah. scary shit. No, it's interesting, but that's uh, so that's m more to do with remedy, because um, I know people were asking about how do you actually enforce some of this stuff, or when they just completely ignore you and they screw you over in the courts and everything else, where do you go? So yeah, you better believe there is somebody to go, but you don't go there until you have no other avenue left, because to be honest with you, if some idiot contacted me, if I was a provost marshal, bitching and complaining about a bunch of stuff that I haven't even tried to seek remedy for, I'd probably have you arrested and thrown in the friggin' clink myself. So... Something to think about. Honor. Got to act honorably. Mm -hmm. Exhaust exhaust your administrative remedies. And people have to get used to that word, administrator. Right? We talk about that. Executor, director, administrator. Same thing. The administrator is a good word. I like that one. Because the administrator is the one who administrates and seeks administrative remedies. And uh, and, and get study up on administrative law in Canada. There's three branches of law in Canada. And administrative law is the biggest and the most important one. The Administrative Act of, nine, of uh, 1940-something. Well, there you go, and I haven't even read that one. Well, it explains exactly what administrators are, what, what some of their duties are. And the best part is administrators includes public officials, including, as in the conventional term, not fucking law bullshit. And uh, it also talks about or mentions that once an administrator has been assigned it must achieve remedy or seek remedy immediately on the spot. So that's why if you assign someone as trustee and you instruct them to administrate this account, they have to do it right on the spot. Yeah, and that's what the ministers here in Manitoba have not been doing. I appointed the, the finance minister here as the uh, fiduciary trustee, sent him in a bunch of remittances, uh, and they did nothing. And they got very specific instructions on what to do, and they've just ignored everything, absolutely everything. Default them, bring them to court. That shit does, still doesn't go through. You might want to start looking at the Provost Marshal or ask if what he can recommend. Yeah, I sent them an actual notice last week telling them they had seven more days to restore this estate and to pay the damages that are outstanding, or I'm coming after them. And today is the last day, so Monday I start my big barrage against the government, the big one. So, Big barrage? The big barrage, yep, that I've been mm -hmm. gearing up for for more than two years. Okay. Hey. Now I have another question here. Uh, what about filing a declaration of sovereign rights held by indigenous power? See, I, I've heard that twice now. I still don't know what it is. 
Me neither. I'm, I'm not even sure. Um, I mean, yeah, sure, you, you can declare whatever you want. Declarations aren't hard and send it off, but you got to make sure that whatever you're sending somebody is relevant. So whatever it says in that document, just make sure it's relevant to whatever purpose you're hoping to achieve. Um, okay, and what about becoming a secured party creditor? You are good. a secured party creditor. Yeah, well, when you are to establish that in court, it's very uh, long and very uh, complicated once you get into the details. Because what they do is they just remove you as a secured party creditor and assign the court as one. But you try to reclaim that back, you have to know exactly what the fuck you're doing. And you have to know exactly why they couldn't do that in the first place. But you have to be careful. People have to keep in mind, you can't sue the court of uh, Ottawa or the court of Toronto or whatever, or sorry, the Supreme Court. You can't sue them because they have sovereign immunity. And the yep. way that they got sovereign immunity is the, is the, um, is the, um, fuck off, shit. The foreign, the Foreign Agencies Act, uh, something tells me it's the Foreign Agencies Act, but uh, in the Foreign Agencies Act, it is pr uh, described as it, it is a protected corporation or protected organization. And when you go and further into details when defining that, you eventually come to the conclusion, or I did, is that they have sovereign immunity, meaning they cannot be sued. So if you want to sue someone that's in the court, you sue them personally. Or the province. Or the province. And the province yep. will instruct them saying, hey, stop doing this shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, my big thing is uh, I don't care who harms you. you got to remember that if, 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 an, if an organization exists <coughs> inside the individual province, it's there with the permission of the province, which means the province is assuming liability for everything. Exactly. Anybody has harmed you, I don't care who it is. Even Canada Revenue Agency, if they've harmed you inside your province, you sue the province. Because they're, they are operating with the province's permission, which means the province is assuming liability for everything CRA does. And I'm fine with that, because I can go after the province, that's local. Yes. That's why they have a crown prosecutor or a crown attorney in every municipal. And yep. if they don't have a municipal... Uh, because your township is too small, then they direct you to somewhere that's within 30 minutes most of the time. Yep. Like, for example, Cottom or Essex, they don't have a Crown Prosecutor. You're going to have to go to Windsor, and that's a 20-minute drive. Yep. It's not that they don't want to. It's just that they do not have the proper funds to help fund it, and they're too small of the municipal to take care of that. So they direct people to go to Windsor. See, and uh, like like every organization that operates within the province of Manitoba that, that's performing a function of government some way has to have a license to do so. They have to be licensed by the province. Everything has to. I mean, look at the Law Society and lawyers. They all have to be licensed to practice in Manitoba. Everything has to be licensed to do something inside Manitoba. CRA, they don't have a license to be collecting income taxes inside the provinces. They've got something called a memorandum of agreement. Yeah. That's not a law. That means they're actually acting unlawfully within the provinces, but the province is assuming liability. Yes. Completely. Because one of the benefits that the province utilizes CRA is to collect on unpaid debts. Yeah, I see they're doing that in Saskatchewan now. They're using CRA to collect on fucking traffic tickets now? Yeah. Wow. Ridiculous. It there should be a number of lawsuits over that immediately. Mm -hmm. that, tells you, that tells you right there, though, CRA is just nothing more than a private collection agency, though. They if are. They're collecting traffic tickets now, then they're private. Yeah, but the thing is, the second that you mentioned the all-caps name, CRA is involved because CRA created Joinder with the social insurance number to that name. Yeah. So what they did is when they issued a social insurance number, they attached that to the actual name, and they bonded it. And they did that of their own accord. They didn't do that without any uh, without any authorization from you. So as far as I'm concerned, you could make the argument if you go to court that CRA was meddling in your estate. They were trying to administrate your estate for you by bonding your so a social insurance number to your to your legal person. Exactly. That's you didn't authorize you didn't authorize that. So they're meddling in an estate. That's one of the reasons why. A crown land patent grant is so powerful because it excludes in all of their jurisdictions. 
and it operates inside of Canada.